Here's how, here's how So much for you to learn about Lots to see and do Follow us, we'll have some fun Here's how, here's how So follow us, we'll show you now Here's how, here's how How long do you think I can hold my breath? I can hold mine for 18 seconds. Huh. I can do better than that. He probably will. Holding their breath is what balloons do best. Ready, Gary? Ready. In fact, that's about all they do. Here I go. Start the watch. <gasps> now! <laughs> Oh. Mm. Nid, nid, nid. You better be careful. <sighs> 18 seconds. It's a tie. Boy, is he out of shape. 18 seconds? Oh, seemed, seemed longer to me. Why? Thank you! <laughs> Thank you! Hmm. How long can you hold your breath? To find out, you'll need a clock or watch of some kind. We use clocks for just about everything these days. They tell us how long it takes to run a race. When to wake up. And when a jet can land. Clocks change the traffic lights and let us know when to eat lunch. I don't need a clock for that. Floating around up here, I see so many beautiful clocks. They're everywhere. There are probably many clocks right in your neighborhood. You may have passed by without even noticing them. is a clock and how does it work? You could take one apart and find out. Taking a watch or clock apart is pretty tricky. Like eating sunflower seeds. I didn't think it would be so hard to take apart a watch. They have so many little pieces and each one does an important job. I can't see right now. <laughs> Do you need a specific type of screwdriver for, for the nuts and bolts that are in here? Yeah. Yeah, part of it's digital. Those are alarm clocks. It's taken hundreds of years to make clocks we can depend on. And only a few seconds to take one apart. If you decide to take a clock or watch apart, be sure that no one wants it first. You might even try putting the pieces back together again. My favorite kind of store is a clock shop. Their windows are the best in town. Look, doesn't this remind you of a toy store? Don't let my dad hear that. Why? Does he own a toy store? No, he's a watchmaker. And he's always telling my brother and me that clocks and watches aren't toys. Your dad's right. Clocks are easily broken. And whoever fixes them must have good eyesight and a steady hand. Clock making dates back nearly 400 years. The earliest clocks were always breaking down. Your dad would have had lots of work in those days. The first clocks were on public buildings and monuments. They were big and heavy. Nobody had room for one in their house. Then someone invented a pendulum. The pendulum is driven by a tightly wound spring. People began buying small pendulum clocks for their homes. When the first watch appeared, it was like a small clock hung around the neck or the waist. So that's when people started watching their watches. Probably that's where the name came from. 
Watches didn't strike the hour, so they had to be watched. I wonder whose idea it was to put pictures on clocks. We've been doing this as long as there have been clockmakers. One of the most famous watches has a mouse on it. You can design a clock or watch too. Use paper plates like we did. Then paint or crayon your picture. And don't forget the numbers. Clock. A ticky poo clock? That's a good one. It tells you what its time is and it counts out. And it says ticky poo. Sounds like a cuckoo clock to me. My favorite kind of clock is um, a clock that tells you the time. And what kind don't you like? Um, the one that don't work. Clockmakers tried, but they couldn't make enough clocks to satisfy everyone. They had to find ways to make clocks and watches faster. Let me guess. They invented a machine. Well, machines made the parts, but people still put them together. These pictures were taken 60 years ago in a clock factory. Most of the work was done by hand. Checked every watch? All pocket watches had to pass the test. As time went on, the machines got faster and faster. Soon, they could join the tiny parts together in seconds. The new clocks and watches kept better time and had fewer parts. Instead of wheels and cogs, they had a brain. A watch with brains? Are you kidding? This man is checking the brain of a new watch. It'll be printed on a tiny chip and put into the watch by a machine. The chip will control all the movements of the watch. You know, maybe you could design a clock for your bedroom. What would it do? And what would it look like? 